Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, April 28th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's tonight's top stories. Tonight, breaking news of Baltimore's mayor who ordered police to allow looters to destroy if they wished, is revealed to be a key player in the federal takeover of police. And the AARP uses a subliminal broadcast about martial law on a PSA. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. I uh, worked with the police and instructed them to do everything that they could to make sure that the protesters were able to exercise their uh, right to free speech. Uh, it's a very delicate balancing act because while we uh, tried to make sure that they were protected from the cars and the other you know, things that were going on, um, we also gave those who wished to destroy space to do that as well. That was Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake making that absurd statement heard around the world, uh, basically that she allowed violent mobs to have a safe space to destroy things. And that's exactly what happened. We saw things kind of kick off on Friday night. And once again, things got really violent and out of control after the funeral for Freddie Gray. We still don't have any answers as to how exactly did his spine get severed uh, once he was in police custody. The cops, of course, still have not come forward with any answers. So the crowd, once again, got a little ratcheted up, and things got a little out of control. But what do you think is going to happen when you basically come out on television and say, we're going to step back and give you a safe place to destroy things? But not only that, now police are actually talking to some journalists there. Uh, police officers in Baltimore uh, said that they were ordered by the mayor not to stop looters during yesterday's riots. So not only are they giving a safe space to destroy since p last Friday, but the police are also told to, to just fall back. And so, you know, we can see the devastation that's happened there today. There are tons of burnt down buildings, a lot of vehicles set on fire, hundreds of injuries and arrests were made. Uh, you can see Paul Joseph Watson's full video there in that article that's up at Infowars.com. But why would you do that unless you want to incite violence, unless you want people to feel like they just have free reign over the city? Of course, you don't want to have a lot of militarized police coming out and attacking people. So I see where the mayor might be kind of skirting around uh, some controversy there. But no, this is actually breaking at Infowars. The Baltimore mayor was a key player in Obama's federal takeover of the local police. Rawlings Blake was one of three mayors who provided broad input into President Obama's task force on 21st century policing. This advocates the federalization of police departments across the country by forcing them to adhere to stricter federal requirements when they receive funding. And of course, that's what we saw following their investigation of there in Ferguson. Now, she said in written testimony before the task force, the federal government can be a strong partner in our efforts in building better relationships between the police and community. So, of course, that would explain her inaction to stop this rioting when it began by allowing this to spiral out of control. Her and her friends there at the Justice Department can use this unrest to justify the expansion of the federal power into local law enforcement. And, of course, it would funnel more money into the mayor's programs. So there again, this is what this is all about. They're basically exploiting the very real feelings of the people there on the streets in Baltimore, exploiting it for government expansion. And it's really kind of such a shame because they have no idea that they are being played like pawns on a chessboard to do the king's bidding. Uh, and they're, they're basically, their protests are going to be used to spark nationwide civil unrest. And of course, that's going to broaden federal control. That's the answer. Problem, reaction, solution. Now, Matt Drudge is known to tweet ominous warnings to America, and he did that once again. He said, everyone in America needs to stop and take a deep breath with the Baltimore riots because America could fall. And really, this is just the beginning, unfortunately. Uh, an article I read yesterday from Truthdig called Rise of the New Black Radicals. 
Uh, it is a really good article, and it talks a little bit about some of these groups. Uh, the writer speaks with uh, some of these new black militants, he's calling them, and he says that they understand that the beast is not simply white supremacy, chronic poverty, and the many faces of racism, but the destructive energy of corporate capitalism. Capitalism? Hmm, I wonder where they got that from. I thought this was about black lives. Now they're fighting against corporate capitalism? So obviously we're seeing some meddling there. Now t Bo is one of the people that he speaks with. He's a hip hop artist from St. Louis and one of the founders of this group, Hands Up United, uh, which was created in the wake of the murder of Michael Brown and Ferguson. And he says he thinks it's gonna be a lot worse this year than it was last summer. He said people have become more radical. They've realized the power they have. They're not afraid of the police or the state, but you also have a police and a military force that have been training for a year to deal with this type of circumstance. So I honestly think this summer is gonna be worse. More violence from the police, and this time, you're not gonna have a group of people who are just gonna stand around and take it. Now you're gonna have people that are actually gonna fight back instead of just being peaceful protesters. So here, these are words coming from one of the founders of Hands Up United, which is one of these groups, uh, one of these of groups of young activists that formed there last summer following everything that happened in Ferguson. And he is warning about coming unrest and basically saying it's it's going to happen. And here he's organizing all these protests that are going on around the country. Now, if you look at their website, uh, Hands Up United, this group quickly built alliances around the globe with not only Brazil, some countries in Latin America, Europe, uh, also Palestine. You'll recall there was people nationwide holding up Hands Up Don't Shoot and, and telling America that they were standing in solidarity with us that we were you know, finally standing up to our tyrannical uh, police state. The point is, is that this is not just one random group that's warning about coming civil unrest. This is a group that's got global ties. And you think, well, these are just a group of hip hop artists there in St. Louis that just all of a sudden now they have this really snazzy website. Snazzy websites are very expensive. Where do they get the money for this website to travel around the country? to send outside protesters to some of these protests going on around the nation. Where are they getting this funding? Well, there you'll see at the bottom of the website, um, and I will link all this research underneath this video, but they have ties to the Open Society Institute, which is of course, once again, George Soros. Ah yes, George Soros, the billionaire philanthropist who somehow always has his hands in civil unrest that's happening around the globe. Now you remember him, he admitted uh, in so much as the responsibility for the coup and mass murder there in the Ukraine. He told CNN that he had established a foundation in Ukraine that ultimately contributed to the overthrow of the country's elected leader and the installation of a junta handpicked by the State Department. And of course this transformation led to fascist ultranationalists controlling Ukraine's security services and other coup leaders there were working with the FBI and CIA. So this is what he does. I mean, he has a long history of openly funding civil unrest around the globe. He gets the people to do his dirty work and then he can swoop in as the savior and install puppet regimes. And it's not as if he's just this lone evil mastermind. He's part of a larger global alliance that is working toward this one world government. Um, but on the ground, the protesters, they don't realize that they're being played. They don't realize that they're falling right into this strategy of pressure from above and below. Uh, this is basically a strategy where they'll deliberately create a problem and then offer only those solutions that result in the expansion of government. So when you see stories like George Soros investing $33 million bankrolling Ferguson demonstrators, creating an echo chamber, which means that it's gonna keep these events and messages at the top of the news agenda uh, in order to drive these national protests. When you see stories like this, he's not investing $33 million because black lives matter to him. This is part of a bigger play going on. He's doing this to foment civil unrest around the globe, just like in the Ukraine and elsewhere. Now, Adon Salazar just posted this article. Once again, we see some Soros group advocates 
welcoming violence against cops in Baltimore. The Open Society Institute actually tweeted these things out. So these are social media pages run by the George Soros founded Open Society uh, Foundations, and they're appearing to justify violence. And one of the articles that they tweeted out uh, is talking about the perfect response to anyone calling for nonviolence in Baltimore. They use an alternative uh, headline that says the important thing everyone calling for nonviolence in Baltimore fails to say. Uh, basically, the article, the gist of it is that there was no official appeal for calm when Gray was being arrested, advocating what is going on there. But of course, we know the perfect response to looting and rioting and civil unrest is going to be an even more heavy handed police state. Now, take a look at this passage from the Capitalist Conspiracy Booklet written in 1971, okay? This was written in 1971 by G. Edward Griffin. On page 35, it says, if those who seek world dominion can stimulate leftist mobs into violent confrontation with local law enforcement and also provide exhaustive news coverage so that the entire nation can see and tremble, then the peaceful and freedom-loving majority can be programmed to accept a vast expansion of government powers and even a national police force offered supposedly to end the violence. Is that not exactly what is happening right now? Problem, reaction, solution. So the protesters, they do not realize that their very real anger is being exploited to do all of the dirty work. I mean, all you have to do is just remember how sketchy and obvious it was when they were about to re reveal the Michael Brown verdict in Ferguson. It was just so obvious. They kept all of the agitated crowd there waiting for hours until it got dark. And then they revealed the verdict in such a way that it really agitated the crowd even further. It set people off. And then, of course, the riots were shown on television. They played all throughout the night, 24-hour news cycle for weeks, just showing the devastation. And the National Guard actually stood back. And they allowed all of that to happen. And people were saying, well, why'd they call the National Guard in if they didn't even do anything to stop the protests? And it's because they wanted people to see this chaos all night long. America's attitude quickly shifted from support and saying, we need to do something about the milita militarized police, to then saying, where's the National Guard? Stop these people, protect everyone from all that property damage. It completely changed the narrative, and that is the same exact thing that is happening again. Except this time, the mayor came right out and said, we gave them a safe space to destroy. And so this time, the mayor comes right out on TV and admits that we gave them space to destroy she tells the police to stand down and then so allows these things to get crazy as expected so that she can declare a state of emergency and then call the National Guard in. Problem, reaction, solution. It's we're seeing it over and over and over again. And that's what they're trying to prepare the rest of America for. That's why you see these things like Jade Helm. Right? You can look back, Operation Garden Plot. Look at their trigger warnings. Now, we've talked about Operation Garden Plot in the past. It's the U.S. Army's 1968 civil disturbance plan, and it's the plan to respond to major domestic civil disturbances within the U.S. Okay, so they've been had this in place, obviously, since the 60s, civil rights movement going on then, but all the stuff is happening once again. It's all this uh, racial tension. So same thing happening again. And look at what they s consider indicators of potential violence. And tell me if this does not sound like 2015. High unemployment and increased crime rates among minority groups, protests, declining rapport between local officials and minority groups, protests by minority groups to such conditions as slum living, segregation, lack of jobs, and police brutality. So now we have groups being funded on record by the globalists saying that activists are preparing for even more unrest and they're also preparing for the violence and state oppression that's going to come along with that civil unrest, the backlash they're going to be receiving from the police and the National Guard. They say, we don't know what, what it's going to look like, but we know it's going to be a lot worse than what you saw last summer. That's why training exercises like Jade Helm make sense. That's why it makes sense when we're seeing drills in Fort Lauderdale where they're rounding up dissidents. That's why it makes sense when we see that they are 
fighting against protesters in California because all of this is being orchestrated behind the scenes. Now, look at this little bit of predictive programming reported by Paul Joseph Watson. It is a seemingly innocuous AARP ad. This ad is about caregiving. It's a mother washing her daughter's hair, and you can barely hear it, but the TV in the background is delivering a fate warning about martial law. So it's very obvious what's happening here. It's all part of the plan to expand the federal government, take over local law enforcement, do away with it all together, and then replace it with what? Federalized police? Where do you think they're getting all these MRAPs from in the first place? Where do you think they're getting all their militarized equipment and all their training? Now they're going to just be under a more heavy-handed authority. So it's going to be a lot worse, actually, and a lot more oppressive, but the only good thing in it is that we're all going to be equally oppressed by the state. Now, coming up next, we're going to have a Jade Helm update. And Max Kaiser called into the Alex Jones show today with some explosive information. Apparently, he was approached by Voice of America to be the turncoat there at RT. When he shut him down, Liz Wall took the job. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. We all know of the countless cases where young black men had drugs or guns planted on them by police. Now the tables have turned by former black police officer Jeffrey Walker from Daily Mail. A disgraced ex-police officer testifying against his drug squad colleagues acknowledged on Tuesday that he stole drug money, planted evidence, and lied on paperwork too many times to count. His victims, in his own words, were white college boy khaki pants types who were easy to intimidate. Now that Mr. Walker is out of a job, maybe he should try his hand at the DEA, apparently having wild sex parties and accepting gifts from drug dealers and working with the Sinaloa cartel is no big deal. DEA head Michelle Leonhardt said, I can't fire, I can't recommend a penalty when asked why she has not fired or revoked the security clearance of agents named in the March 2015 OIG report, which included an account of an agent hitting a prostitute in the face with a glass over a money dispute. So, Mr. Walker, you can probably get a job with the biggest drug dealers on earth and continue your disreputable ways. Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com, InfoWars Nightly News, and PrisonPlanet.tv.
Evidence in crimes of violence, such as this bloody garment, is examined by an expert from the Hairs and Fibers Unit, another of several specialized units of the FBI laboratory. The National Academy of Sciences published a report calling into question numerous forensic sciences and calling for increased oversight and research into the growing issue of forensic sciences in 2009. Now, homicide convictions nationwide are being stayed due to a 2012 inquiry by the FBI that is reviewing almost 3,000 homicide cases from three decades ago that used what is being called junk science to determine the guilty parties using forensic analysis of hair samples. The FBI has acknowledged nearly every examiner in its elite forensic unit gave flawed testimony in almost all trials in which they offered evidence against criminal defendants in more than a two-decade period before the year 2000. The faulty science led to 32 death sentences in a review of 342 cases. The FBI still has a backlog of 1,200 cases to review in order to see how many more innocent people may have been prosecuted by their junk science. The uh, re previously reported uh, Q12 hair, Caucasian head hair exhibiting characteristics of apparent decomposition at the root end, exhibited the same microscopic characteristics as the Caucasian head hairs from the hair mass. Accordingly, this hair and the hair mass are consistent with originating from the same source. However, it should be noted that hairs are not a means of positive identification. Mark Godsey, director of Exoneration Advocacy Group, the Ohio Innocence Project, says, the ironic thing is that the public believes the forensic science we've got is infallible in the courtroom. The reality is, it's the exact opposite. It's embarrassing and dangerous. In 1978, 17-year-old Sante Tribble was convicted of murder of a Southeast Washington, D.C. taxi driver based on the testimony of two FBI forensic experts. Tribble served 28 years in prison based on expert evidence that turned out to be a dog's hair when examined by an independent analyst. With the ruling, Tribble became the second DC man this year and the third since 2009 to be exonerated after serving a lengthy prison term based on false hair matches by different examiners in the FBI laboratory. The findings do, as Senator Blumenthal said, constitute nothing less than an appalling and chilling indictment of the criminal justice system. Now the lab errors and false testimony have been discovered. The federal government and the 46 states, including Connecticut, in which convictions were obtained, at least in part with flawed testimony, should, depending on whatever other evidence exists in each case, either agree to a new trial or ask to have the conviction vacated. Pop TV culture would have you believe that this science is legitimate. Entire shows hinging on the expert scientific evidence given by federal forensic analysts. A prime example of the use of propaganda to sway the public's perception. What has transpired at the FBI is nothing less than a complete breakdown of justice. John Bound, Infowars.com. Hey, this is Rob Dew with Infowars.com with some breaking news. Uh, you've heard a lot about Jade Helm. We sent our reporters, Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs, yesterday to cover the meeting in Bastrop, where the public was overwhelmingly against this military exercise, this covert military operation being held in Texas soil, and especially in the Bastrop area. So you've seen that. I'm going to put some links to some of the videos we've posted uh, some of the live stream stuff that we put up, just so you can get the feel of what people were, were saying about this. Well, now it looks like the governor of Texas is getting into the game, and this is the breaking news. This is a tweet from Greg Abbott. I've ordered the Texas State Guard to monitor Jade Helm 15 to safeguard Texans' constitutional rights, private property, and civil liberties, which on its surface sounds like a great, that sounds like a great tweet. They're going to be there to help us. Now, the Texas State Guard is one of the three branches of the Texas military forces. They're also part of the Texas Army National Guard and the Texas 
Air National Guard. So you got those three different organizations coming together to be part of the Texas State Military. The mission of the Texas State Guard is to provide mission-ready military forces to assist state and local authorities in times of state emergencies to conduct homeland security and community service activities under the umbrella of defense support to civil authorities and to augment the Texas Army National Guard and Texas Air National Guard as required. So that's their mission, stated mission, which seems to work right hand in hand with Jade Helm and what is going on. But here's the interesting part. You look at Camp Swift, which is very near where all these exercises are going to be held. It's just north of Bastrop. It used to be a German prisoner of war camp, incidentally. That's where it first got its start back during World War II. But now it's an Army training center. And also, here it is, uh, Camp Swift Army Base in Bastrop County, located in Bastrop County, Texas. Camp Swift has a population of 6,200 and spans 12 square miles. The camp has consistently been used by the military, but it is currently still in use by the National Guard as a storage and training facility. They do a lot of artillery runs there. They do firearms training, all kind of stuff there. So now that Greg Abbott's come out and said this, is he just is he basically just coming out and saying that the Texas military is going to work with the Jade Helm forces in conducting these exercises, or they really are going to be just monitoring them. I'm going to read his tweet again. I've ordered the Texas State Guard to monitor Jade Helm 15 to safeguard Texas constitutional rights, private property, and civil liberties. And you saw the negative reaction that the two army officers, one is the civilian and one's the actual lieutenant colonel that are in charge of these Jade Helm exercises here in this area. You saw the kinds of questions they were asked yesterday. We were covering it live uh, on our Ustream channel. Hey, I'm Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, U.S. Army, retired, Infowars.com. And I have a question. You said your training will be to blend in um, for overseas combat missions. So I'm kind of curious how these special operations guys who look like us, look like him, are going to be practicing blending in when we all look the same. Don't they need to train in an area overseas for the combat they're going to go to? Because that, quite frankly, doesn't make sense to me from my time in the military because you guys have Fort AP Hill in Virginia, the asymmetric warfare center that has a school, a soccer field, a subway station, a bank, all that, and you're training on these environments which look like here. That's why people are concerned. Excellent question. Do you have any other so with that, realistic military training occurs off of the federal installation out in the local area. That's what we're doing. As far as blending in, yeah, you take a guy from uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina, I dress differently than people dress here. It's regional. It's one of those. <laughs> I've been at Fort Bragg. I was for seven years. You may not like my answer, but that is, that is how it is. And you may have been at Fort Bragg, and people dress differently in and around the 10 surrounding counties, and you've seen it. In the 10 surrounding counties, people dress differently, and you've seen how soldiers dress. And you can sticker about it all you want, but okay. that is the truth. We also had the guys live in on the Alex Jones Show, and then we had them live in on the Nightly News. I'm going to put these links down at the bottom so you can go to them and, uh, and watch those videos for yourself and see if you think that is, – is Greg Abbott just kind of paying lip service to the Jade Helm thing because it's popular to say, hey, I'm against – you know, I'm, I'm going to be watching these military guys closely? Or is he basically just coming out and saying, we're going to be working together with them. This is our way of saying it, so get used to it. We're going to have military on the streets. Now, I don't really have too much of a beef with Greg Abbott uh, personally or politically or anything like that. I'm just noticing this tweet and how it's come out now with, with what, what's going on in Bastrop and with other areas on the United States. This is going to be a large exercise. And these guys, we, we've heard them. They say they're going to be training in covert, in plain clothes. If you notice them, they're not doing their mission properly. That That's come out. So... I don't know. What do you think? What do you think in the comments? What do you think of what the uh, Texas governor has to say about Jade Helm? Put your comments below and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. And if you'd like to really support us, become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. It's your subscription that you can share with up to 20 people. You can watch the live stream of the radio show, the live stream of the nightly news, plus have access to all the videos we produce here and Alex's books and the giant documentary films. There's at least 20 of them there online for you to check out and download and share with your friends. So there you go. Um, enjoy this video and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. This is Rob Dew for InfoWars Nightly News and PrisonPlanet.tv.
From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. Did you know that only six corporations control 90% of what millions of Americans see, hear, and read every single day? It's the illusion of choice. Think about it. The mainstream media is owned by only a handful of mega corporations with vested interests. But on the other hand, the Internet is an interconnected network of billions of sources. So you can research information for yourself from multiple sources, or you can blindly accept what you hear or read in the mainstream media, never questioning what you are being told. This gives you a false sense of reality. I mean, do you actually know what you think you know? Or have you been programmed to accept someone else's version of events? Think about it. This is Darren McBreen, and I want you to break the matrix at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. And listen to The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on in your mind. Russian intervention in Crimea is wrong. And indeed, as a reporter on this network, I face many ethical and moral challenges. And that is why, personally, I cannot be part of a network funded by the Russian government that whitewashes the actions of Putin. I'm proud to be an American and believe in disseminating the truth. And that is why, after this newscast, I'm resigning. Did you see the RT reporter that you're talking about who, who did that whole stage thing that she quit testifying before Congress? We played it last week, saying they, they basically asked, get rid of free speech and that, and that evil alternative media must be stopped? They, they asked me to do that. Wait a minute. You're breaking, you're breaking major that. news. You're saying you were approached to do a stage defection from RT. Yeah. Uh, and I used to talk to you on the show like two and a half years ago. We shared a studio with Voice of America. I remember I used to dial in and you were there. Uh, okay, you've got the floor. Uh, tell us what happened. Well, uh, exactly what I just said. And I've said it on your show before. When we're doing our show in Paris, we shared a studio with the Voice of America. And they would come on and they would do their propaganda. And they would say, you know what, you, you should be a patriot. You shouldn't be doing RT or press TV. You need to be doing Voice of America. And I said, no, you guys are pure propaganda. So then... As RT started to get more and more popular, they started coming back to me with, come on over, and they start talking about doing like a staged, on-air defection, and it's going to be worth your while, 
and they started talking about some sums of money that were not insignificant. And I kept saying, no, you don't get it. You guys are propaganda. I'm a journalist. That's two different things. So then when the Liz Wall thing went down, I'm like, I checked around, and they're like, yeah, you know, as, as we all knew, eventually they would find the weak spot in the organization with their offer. Almost like a cult, I would say, that is formed uh, online and they mobilize and they they feel like they are part of some enlightened um, fight against the establishment. They find an outlet where they can, where they can, um, a platform to, to voice their deranged views. That's it for the show tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and become a subscriber to the Alex Jones channel and if you'd like to support this operation, head over to Prison Planet TV and become a subscriber. You can get instant access to over 18 years worth of content that you will not find on YouTube. And of course, you help to keep this operation up and running and you can share your username and password with up to 20 people at the same time. And we definitely appreciate your support here at InfoWars. Thanks for tuning into the show tonight and we'll see you here tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. When it comes to you and your family's health, InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The whole point is that under a surveillance state, you have very few liberties. Unless they, if they don't want you to have certain, do certain things, then they have ways and means of getting to you like they did with us. They came busting in. One of them came running up uh, and uh, was pointed a gun at my eyeballs and pulled me out of the shower. You know, if you have nothing, uh, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. Well, that's a great quote from Joseph Goebbels, first of all. And secondly, it's totally irrelevant what you think. What you think is totally irrelevant. It means absolutely nothing. The government only considers its view of you. And if you're doing something they don't like, they will come after you, no matter what you think of it. You had the will to march into Congress and to tell them what was going on, the first guy. I mean, that's 10 times bigger than Snowden internally. And to really start this whole internal debate and this avalanche of understanding now, I mean, you were really one of the first people to ring the bell to warn folks that, that the country as we knew it was being dismantled. Why else would they keep all these things secret, do things in secret with a secret court, keeping their interpretation secret? I put it down to three factors. The power, money, and control. If they'd have deployed it, uh, we would have, uh, we would have, in my view, there would be no way we wouldn't have stopped 9/11. The, the biggest threat I see, anyway, is uh, is the federal government and how they're operating in secrecy and basically creating a secret government. Uh, so I, I basically call it the greatest threat to our democracy and republic since the Civil War. Are you confident that you know everything that's going on within that agency and that you can say to the American people, it's all done the right way? Yes. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.